Data and measurements. So these are kind of the tools of the trade for scientists. First, act like a scientist. So it's the essence of science to start making observations about you, in, about your physical world, the natural world around me. Now, to be honest, you have already done experiments. For example, when you started to learn to walk. You tried to do something and you probably fell down. So as a toddler, you made an observation that this thing makes me fall down. And then you tried something else. You were running an experiment. As a scientist, we take this idea and we just get a little bit more specific. We run experiments that are designed to explore one very specific thing in the world, also known as a phenomena. When we design experiments, we are looking at two very specific things. One is a control, which is an aspect of the experiment that remains the same. We control it and we keep as many things the same as we possibly can, but we change one and we call this the variable. And this is an aspect of the experiment that can be changed by the scientist so that they can make some observations based on that change. Basically, scientists pay attention and make observations about one very specific thing, and we call these observations. This is information that is gathered during the course of an experiment. We call this an observation or observations, and we divide it into two types. Qualitative, and you'll see in blue, I've put, the, uh, you can see the word quality. So qualitative is a type of observation that deals with qualities or characteristics. An example is colors or shapes. So let's play a game really quick. What observations can you make about Mr. Fay? Did you observe that my shirt is blue? Cool. Did you observe that my wall back here is white? Those are two visual observations about colors. That's good. But what about other kinds of senses? Like, for example, if I hold up my arm, if you were to feel my arm, I think it would feel hairy. Or my head would feel smooth. Those are texture observations. And then finally, my voice is a sound observation. I don't normally talk like this. And most people would observe that I have a very deep voice, which is a sound observation that is a qualitative observation. Quantitative observation are observations that deal with quantities or numbers. And you will see that the word quantity is kind of hidden in the term quantitative. An example is 10 apples or 34.82 centimeters. Now, quantitative observations have one specific characteristic that make them useful. And that is this word that follows the number. We call this word the unit. You must include a unit so that you inform other scientists what it is that you are measuring. Now I can give you an example. Here we go. Oh my gosh, guys, you would never believe that I just saw 10. It doesn't make much sense unless I include a word after the number in order to describe what the number is measuring. 
Let me do it again. Oh my gosh, you would not believe I just saw 10 rhinoceroses. Now the sentence makes much more sense because I've included the unit rhinoceroses. In order to make quantitative measurements, sometimes we use measuring tools. It is very common to use a measuring instrument tool to make quantitative measurements. These tools come in two different forms. The first one is digital, and that is a measurement are displayed as a number format. The scientist just records all the numbers. And your cell phone timer is a great example of a digital measuring tool. The flip side of that is analog. And this is a tool that uses increments or divided into the same size and it represents a measurement. It requires that you, as the scientist behind the tool, interprets what the measurement means. Here's an example of one that we use in science class quite a bit. This is a meter stick, and it has many, many, many different lines. But you probably have something in your kitchen that you pour liquid into and then measure where what mark it runs up. I think if you have a measuring cup, that has lines along it, when you pour liquid in it up to the line, you know you have half a cup of milk, for example. That would be an example of an analog measuring device. Okay, let's do an activity. So, uh, I don't know what measuring device you have, but I'm pretty sure that you have a hand. Can we use that to measure something? If I take my thumb and fold it under here, could I measure from here to here and call that the unit hand? If I measure from here to here, can I call that the hand? And what's cool about hands is they can be divided up into four equal parts. And so the width of one finger could also be known as 0.25 of a hand, or a quarter of a hand. The next finger is also 0.25, and so if I use two of them together, I get 0.5 of a hand. If I add a third one, I get 0.75 of a hand, and then a full hand. And so this is what I'd like you to attempt to measure. Can you go to the room, uh, the door of your room, and on the floor, measure from the left side of your door to the right side of your door by using your hands. So this is one hand, but if I put my other one up next to it, that's two, and three, and four, and so on and so on. At the end, when your hand comes close, can you jam a finger in there? If that is the case, you would have, let's say, 11.25 hands. Two fingers, 11.50 hands. And three fingers would be 11.75 hands. Why don't you go try it now? Okay, how'd it go? Were you able to record how many hands fit in your doorway and included the number of fingers? If only one finger, you can add 0.25 hands to your measurement. If you could slip two fingers in, you can add 0.50 hands to your measurement. Three fingers, you can add 0.75 hands to your measurement. But I got a question. If I were to come to your house and measure the exact same door, do you think we'd get the same number? No. My hands are different sizes than yours. So we might get different numbers. But 
If I wanted to figure out whether your desk, a desk, could fit through that door, could I use this measuring technique in order to figure out whether my desk will fit through my door? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, what if I were to ask you to measure the distance between your front door and the grocery store? Do you think hands is a good idea? Probably not. It would take hundreds, if not thousands, of hands to do that. But what if I were to walk? Would my stride be a good measuring device? Yeah, that seems a little bit better. Three is better than one. Many times, scientists repeat their experiments to see if they make the same observations over and over again. This is known as a trial. Usually, usually, three trials is enough to ensure that an observation is what's called reproducible or I can get it again.